Let's talk about yesterday in crude oil, right? Who, what, what kind of futures uh, people would we be if we didn't talk about the biggest range of the, of, for a session um, of the entire year? We're about halfway through the year, and it was the largest trading range uh, that we've seen. So we should talk about it. So if we were to just use this TPO chart and take a look at what in the world has been going on in crude oil on a very long-term basis, what stands out to you guys? What, even if you know market profile or don't market, know market profile, each one of these little blobs are a single day's trading activity. What are some things we can garner by looking at this chart? It could be anything. There's no wrong answers here. What do you see? And we'll mark it up. Roll over top. Okay, so we kind of rolled over maybe in this sequence. Gaps. Okay, we can see a couple gaps highlighted in here. Sure. Stuck in range for a good bit. I would agree. I think we tried to go higher and then we really settled into kind of this this area, um, which was very, very choppy. And especially here lately, right? We were very much in this area. We were very much, very sideways. Uh, head and shoulders even maybe, right? You could see that uh, kind of. Broke out of consolidation. I don't know where you mean that because that occurs all over on this chart. But, uh, you know, for example, I think the most recent breaks are we were, we were balancing in this area, we broke higher, we balanced in this area, and then we, we failed to, to get any continuation there, broke lower, and then obviously lower. But yeah, I think you, that, 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 that's a lot of uh, um, really good things to observe about this market. So that's right, a long time, 10 days, you know, it's not just like a, you know, we can look at this chart and identify two days that were together, two days that were together, you know, a day and a half that was together, uh, maybe three or four days that were together. We can identify little clusters, as some people pointed out, Greg. Um, but, you know, this is a big one. This was a big one right here. And this is a big one here. So, before yesterday, something had already begun to unfold. And I think Peter's nailing it here. It tried to go up and it couldn't. A lot of, what do you guys hear me say all the time? Somebody, what's the phrase I'm about to say? Right. It's what didn't happen. So on this, on this, this multiple time frames here, we had a consolidation, which broke higher, okay, on this day. Everything's fine, you know, we're holding this breakout level, everything's fine. In fact, you guys know, what was I, what, what did I keep talking about? What level, 63, 63 was the level that I was really interested in. And I was very bullish over this sequence. I was really bullish. I was getting on to students of mine that weren't bullish enough during this sequence. They were using other variables. I thought they were missing out on the main narrative. Uh, that was unfolding in this market. And so I wanted students to be really bullish against this area. And I'll stand by that no matter, the, yeah, we didn't go higher from here. Does that mean my analysis is wrong? No, 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 no. We don't attach the outcome to the quality of the analysis. Now, granted, if you can't trade worth a crap and you're always wrong and you know that type stuff, well then, you know, maybe there's some something to be learned there, but that's not the case with me as, as you guys see. So. This day that breaks down here is extremely significant. We break down 63. Not only that, but I forget where our next level was exactly, but it was almost where I have this drawn here. And at the end of the day, we were actually holding underneath that level. This is a massive shift in this market. We establish value, we break higher, we establish value, and then that pattern fails. And in fact, after having left such a large area of balance, 
we weren't able to put any type of imbalance together. We broke out the first day and then we balanced and balanced and balanced. Now, sometimes that happens. It can take some time, right? We see that happening over time, even on this chart. Uh, so nothing was super atypical about seeing a few days balancing, uh, but we never ever got any imbalance to the upside. Never happened, only on this first day. And not only that, we don't need to predict necessarily, and I certainly wasn't predicting. I was continued to go with what is. I was bullish against 63. And then that fails in a big way. Not only does it fail from this balance, not only does it revert back into this balance, but then it begins to kind of hold below the lower edge into that close. It's no surprise what happened overnight it's no surprise we got a gap down, and it's no surprise we had a really strong trend day. Now, several of the, the answers of, of one that we got uh, in, in the, uh, the, our little quick little poll right there, those are students of mine. Those are people who've taken the market profile course, who are able to read context like this and able to see the narrative unfolding, able to see what doesn't happen which can often lead to uh, um, you know, even stronger moves in the, the other direction. So I just thought that that was a really important, not about, hey, how do you trade the big down day? But guys, don't you wanna be able to see the trend days and the strong potential for the trend days as they even present themselves? Aren't you going to, if I were to ask some kind of a follow-up question like, well, how did you trade the day? Not how prepared were you for it, but how did you end up executing on it? Well, don't you think you're going to execute better if you're able to identify a current market condition, which is more conducive, which is more likely to seeing strong trending behavior? I can't tell you how many, uh, even uh, market profile and especially volume profile people, I hear saying, well, I don't, I don't, I lose money on trend days. I accept it. It's part of the way I trade. I trade from outside in. I look to fade edges. Um, that's, that's the way I operate. And if a market trends, I, I lose money. I think a, a very, very superior way of trading to that is to actually identify when and where you want to apply mean reversion type tactics and when and where you want to apply continuation, imbalance, trending type tactics. It's important. So if we actually look at, uh, this, here's this 10,000 um, volume chart that we typically look at the, um, the weekly volume profiles on and whatnot. Well, here's that 63 level, right? And here's where we got underneath and held on Wednesday into the wee hours uh, of the morning into the the, the open, who recalls right here in the inventories, who recalls what we were mentioning in the chat. So the actual level which I had uh, switched to using, I believe was 6290 is what I was calling it in the room. I believe the exact level was like 6287 or 88, something like that. And we talked about this. And in fact, maybe I even, I, I can't remember, maybe I made a post where I talked about talking about it or because I thought it was such an important area. Um, sure, it's into inventories. Are we really going to just get short right here uh, as we get into inventories? I hate inventories. I hate inventories. It screws up so many good trades for me. It really does. Um you know, you, you work into the ideal trade location and you've got to flatten out coming into it because I'm telling you, it's just not worth the risk. I've gotten burned in the past. I think many traders who have flirted with holding through inventories have. Um, but anyways, yes, would that have been the ideal trade location? You betcha. You betcha. It came within a, you know, inside of 10 cents, I believe, to the actual reference we were using in those high 6280s. Um, clear rejection from that point. And even if you aren't able to get on board there, you know what's going on. 
you know the context. You know what didn't happen. All that market profile stuff we were looking at earlier in that context. Well, now that we're the, the session's underway and, and we're heading into these days, I mean, you know what you you know what the potential is. And so not only that, but now we can go with what have we been doing here today? It's it's essentially a top-down approach, right? We started with a big zoomed out picture, looking at context, looking at what the chart could tell us. Then we dive into this more price action chart on a, a slightly lower time frame. We look at kind of a, some, some movement and, and firming up and retest of an area that we begin to break away from. Um, what are we going to start to use next? What's going to allow you to trade um, some of these really fast trend type plays rather than sitting there in your hands waiting for it to pull back 80 cents to, for you to get involved? What's going to allow you to do that? Order flow. You're going to be able to see the strength of the participants, the speed of the tape. You're going to get a sense for those things, and you're going to, with over experience and through studying those things, you're going to begin to realize short-term situations within a contextual situation and conditions that allow you to identify, hey, I can go with the faster type trend plays here rather than needing to see more standard pullbacks or even deeper pullbacks or huge retracements before I get involved. There's plenty of opportunity um, along the way here. And even as we trade, you know, today, obviously uh, we, we settled into a little bit of a, a balance yesterday afternoon, right? We started to consolidate a little bit in this area. Um, our, our definition of trend held and maintained here. We push a little bit lower. Uh, in fact, what was the level I was talking at? Uh, once we started to sell off early on, I was talking about how, you know, we could easily see uh, 58.50 was uh, an area that I had, had pointed out. Um, and sure enough, you know, pretty quickly we were able to get, get right to that 58.50 area just in front of it. And then we traded through there. And then we held below 58.50 from below here, here. And that set up for one last push. And then we revert right back into that. Um, into the afternoon. So coming to today, what levels did we talk about? We talked about a um, 50, 58 essentially, right? It's ballparking, it's not precise. And we talked about uh, 5750s. Uh, initial inflection today was again up at that kind of, excuse me, that's, that's a different, uh, um, not again, but 5890 essentially. Um, so we got the rejection from there. In fact, I thought that we could potentially see some buying from here. My definition of trend had us in an uptrend right here shortly after the open. We'd pushed up and kind of flirted with holding above. And technically this level is, you know, 5880s. So it's a little bit lower than I've drawn it, but you know, in this general zone, 5890. Um, we have this tight little overnight balance, which is a great reference to trade from. Really great reference to trade from. So I was stalking long as we retraced into here. I forget if I expressed this publicly or only in the mentees. Um, let's go see if I can find a little tight wedge um, as we build the day's VPOC and we're retesting the upper end of that overnight balance. And then at 935, I mentioned the more time it's unable to bounce here, right? What's not happening, the more likely we are to head down to the lower end of that overnight area. Um, and then later I mentioned how I stopped and reversed in that area, because that's pretty rare for me. Uh, typically, um, in fact, one of the things, I, I forget where I typed this or something, but I talked about I was uncomfortable with the overall narrative here of getting long. All my short-term things lined up. Order flow was in my favor here. Um, my intraday framework was in my favor here. Um, even borderline acceptance into this area here was in my favor. Um, but what I didn't like was some of the higher time frame narratives to where this could be a, a bearish inflection. And sure enough, it was. And so when we come down to this area, we try and bounce, we try and bounce, we try and bounce. Um, in fact, the pattern that I saw, just so we talk about it very clearly here, was one where the market drifts down, 
I'm looking to get a bounce. I'm looking for this thing to go higher. And what does it do? It settles into this tight little consolidation. Okay. What does it do from there? It drops and then the buyers take it back. That's a beautiful place to get long. That's where you want to be long. That's what we call a spring pattern. It's a, it's a great price action pattern. But what happens, it just comes up to here and fizzles out again and the sellers take control again in a meaningful way. This is where I realized what didn't happen on multiple time frames, right? What didn't happen in terms of an overall move, what didn't happen in terms of following a spring pattern, there should have been trapped sellers here and they should get squeezed out. It didn't happen, the sellers show right back up. I'm getting short here. I'm aligning myself with a contextual narrative that's saying you really do wanna be bearish from this level. But what was I doing in the meantime? I was going with more shorter term references. I was being cautious. And given that, we talk about this all the time, guys. People, my students say, well, you know, when do you scratch trades versus when do you have the conviction to just really hang on? Well, it depends on the clarity that we have and the narrative that's unfolding. And today, I mentioned uh, privately, I was uncomfortable with the narrative against what I was doing. And so that makes it very... That puts me in a, in a situation where I'm quick to reverse, I'm quick to scratch out, I'm quick to stand aside because I'm not gonna give this thing a long leash. If I got an A plus contextual narrative and things are really, really strong and looking fantastic and I have order flow like I did and I have intraday condition like I did, all these things, well then yeah, I'll give it real room and I'll take the full stop if need be. Um, but in this case, we didn't have that so we were able to reverse the short and then it, as we see, it didn't take it long to actually traverse this. And then actually more, right? We broke and then we got the retest of that for more. And we talked about, hey, it's somewhere around in here. I mentioned, hey, 58 is my next level and then uh, 57.50. And so this was a great place to take profits in front of if you were, if you were still short from, from the failure here or the breakdown here or whatever. Then we got the retest here I really got a little tricked here by some order flow. This, this high here, I believe it was 38 cents or something like that. At some point over here, I really thought that we were gonna wick that and I was gonna be able to get uh, more involved on the short side. It never, never panned out, it just started to go so I had to kinda get involved a little later than I would like to, which is okay. This time, next time through 58, it's not a problem, we get through. And we go to our next next area, 5850s. This is not a secured looking low here. Then we wick it right there. Uh, very nice. And that's that. Um, in fact, I thought there was a long opportunity here. We have um, this occurring, um, which again, my level's actually in the 5790s. So if you adjust that a little bit, what's essentially occurring here is this thing gets above here and it's kind of holding this area, which leads to, um, a particular type of trade here. Uh, you could play it as a reversion back to VWAP in the 30s, which is right here. Um, or you could be flattening out of it uh, as we speak, because I think that's, it's kind of exhausting. We're seeing uh, some neutralization, different things um, at, the, at, at this exact point in time. So sh my expectation would be to see something from sellers uh, begin to show up here and probably pretty rotational in this environment here, um, if, but, but, but kind of bearish from here. That would be the expectation going forward. Well, that worked out nicely. I think we're, uh, we're out of time here, but very, very important. I think what, what more important could we do on a Futures Friday talk here rather than go through some of the most meaningful, potentially profitable, um, but, and, and as we have exhibited here, easily trackable and easily seeable that the potential for that type of stuff is there. You have to, have to, have to, whether you for free keep picking up on nuggets from me that you get from Futures Fridays, or you really want to go dive in and learn it from the market profile course or the course we're going to open up for sale hopefully next week, the Futures Foundation program. Um, you need to establish a higher time frame, contextual market framework, a way of understanding 
what the market's up to. It's not just draw a bunch of support and resistant lines, guys. There's more to the story that's, that's going on and you, you have to develop, whether it's the one I teach you or another one, you have to develop a framework for understanding contextual risk reward, current market condition, what's going on, the narrative that's unfolding. And then you go trade inside of that and then you go apply shorter term tactics. Then you decide whether you take a, a little targeted scalp or whether you go for a big trend play or what, what you're looking to accomplish um, and work on your, your timing skills, work on your order flow reads, work on uh, your trade management, um, nailing down your risk, adhering to those things and simply going and executing flawlessly. That's what we're all after. So hope this has been helpful as always. Have a fantastic weekend.